Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 7, Video 5 on Resistance and Power Prediction using Hull Speed. We've seen how the slender body method can be used for predicting the resistance of a slender hull. Let's have a look now at how we can take the results of the slender body method and use it to calculate the free surface wave pattern generated by a vessel. The methodology that's used to calculate the free surface wave pattern is based on the Michel potential flow method. Uh, that's the method that we used for the slender body resistance. It's an idealized method, so it doesn't include the effects of viscosity and wave breaking, but it's still an effective way to do comparative analysis of the waves generated by a hull at a given speed. Part of the options that we need to enter before calculating the wave pattern is the speed the vessel is traveling at, the amount of sea area that we want to generate a grid over to generate the waves, whether or not we want to generate a one side or both sides of the hull, uh, the precision of the mesh that we're going to use for the wave pattern and because the waves are often quite small relative to the rest of the model we can deliberately exaggerate the height of the waves in the vertical direction if we want to. Once the wave pattern is calculated we can draw it or render it on screen as well as export it to a text file or a DXF mesh file which can be loaded into Excel or AutoCAD respectively. So let's go over to hull speed and we can see we've got our slender body hull here that we've done our analysis on using the solve resistance analysis command and just below that you can see the calculate free surface command. If I open up that command we can choose the speed that we want to calculate it at and we can define that either in terms of the speed in knots or in terms of the fruit number. I'm going to generate it on both sides of the hull and we just define the size of the grid in terms of the number of vessel lengths. So I'm going to generate a mesh that's one vessel length forward and four vessel lengths aft of the hull and two vessel lengths on either side of the hull. And I'm going to use a mesh of 100 by 100 points for the density of my mesh. The integration precision parameter is a little bit obscure but a low precision will be in the range of 20,000 and a high precision in the range of 90,000. Uh, using the higher value will take a lot longer to calculate but it will give you a more accurate result. And finally we can choose to leave the waves at their default height or slightly exaggerate the vertical height of the waves. So I'm going to calculate that now and we'll see our progress bar at the bottom left hand corner of the window showing the calculation progress. Once the once the calculation has finished then the mesh can be displayed on screen by going to the display menu and turning on the wave grid command. Here I've got the rendering on and so we can zoom out a little and rotate it around to see the uh, generated wave grid from different angles. So you can see we've got quite a uh, realistic wave grid generated there. We can see the interaction between the waves from the two hulls. So that's a useful picture for presentation purposes and for interpreting our results. But if we actually want to get the hard data behind that, then from the file menu, we've got an option there to save the free surface. So when we choose to save the free surface, we've got the option of saving it as a text file or a DXF file. So I've saved uh, a text file to disk and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up Excel and then inside of Excel I'm going to load up that data. So I can load up my text file in Excel and uh, it will open up the usual text import wizard. This file is specifically designed to be read into Excel, it's in tab delimited format, so I can just click finish. And what we can see is that the data is organized into a grid format with the longitudinal coordinates down the left and the transverse coordinates along the top. And then each data point within the grid shows the height of the wave at that point in the grid. So if I want to use Excel to interpret this data, all I need to do is select a column and I'll just scroll down to the bottom of the data to the bottom of the column and then repeat that in a column further along where I want to take uh, my height. So I'll pick up this column here and scroll down on that column down to the bottom and then use the Excel chart wizard to choose an XY scatter chart with uh, my data points on it and you can see it's very easy to define a graph 
that's essentially a longitudinal section at a defined offset away from the vessel that shows how the wave height varies from the, tr the uh, point at the transom of the boat going aft and the wave height at each point aft at that, at that offset. So that concludes our calculation of the free surface effect from the slender body analysis and hull speed. Thank you very much for watching.